Hey everybody, we're back working on this 1970s farm tractor. After getting it started again, it uh, quickly became obvious that there was still a fair bit of work to do. You know, like this steady fuel leak from the injector pump. It looks like the seals around the accelerator shaft are the problem here. There's uh, fuel just pouring out. Hopefully it's an easy fix. Right away I'm confronted with what has to be a farmer fix. There's no way this spring attaches to a fuel line. I'll have to research that a bit and uh, make it right again. I'm hopeful that this repair can be done without a deep dive into the injector pump itself. From what I've read and what I can see, that looks like a much more involved task that I'd really rather avoid right now, if, if at all possible. This linkage is connected directly to the hand throttle and controls the amount of fuel pumped into the engine, which ultimately determines the engine's RPM. The second lever cuts the fuel to the system and shuts the engine off. The parts diagram I have shows two rubber O-rings on each of the two shafts, so I'll, uh, I'll replace them all while I'm here. This cover is normally filled with slightly pressurized fuel. The paper gasket ripped as it came off. It's probably the original one, so I'll need to replace that to uh, avoid another leak in the future. Sure enough, the rubber has dried out and these O-rings have uh, cracked and are actually starting to disintegrate. When I work on old machinery, I pretty much expect this. Rubber just doesn't seem to age well. I keep a pretty good inventory of metric O-rings for my motorcycle projects on hand, and these ones look to be pretty common. I was really pleased to find that my local tractor supplier had that paper gasket in stock and at a really reasonable price. It's less than $15, I think. So I put everything back together exactly as I found it, including two new copper washers on the mounting nuts. The cotter pin for the shutoff lever broke when I removed it, so I'm just going to use this piece of stainless steel wire until I can get another one. I guess that's my first farmer fix on this machine, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get it proper. I, I don't like that kind of stuff. So it turns out that there's supposed to be a spring connecting the two levers. I'll either have to order the correct one or find something that will work. It's a fairly low priority right now. I'm pretty sure the engine will run just fine without it. 
With all that taken care of, I just need to bleed the air from the system and uh, it's time to move on to the next thing. The engine is coated in diesel fuel and oil mixed with matted leaves, grass and mouse nests which forms a kind of grunge that just makes it unpleasant to work on. So I'm going to begin by soaking the whole thing down in Dawn dish soap and then I'm going to go at it with the high pressure nozzle on my pressure washer. I've gone through this process before on various machines and I know it's going to take several washes to get it all off. It's, uh, it's definitely a process. Things are looking better already. It looks like I took a bit of the black paint off, which uh, shows you the original Fiat red underneath. I'll probably touch that up in the future, maybe. Now that everything's clean, I can clearly see that one of the injector seals is leaking compression. I heard it earlier, but the whole top of the engine was so coated with garbage that I, I couldn't really isolate it. It's pretty obvious now. Just before I take the injector all the way out, I, I think it's probably a good idea to clear the area around it of any uh, loose debris. And anything that uh, falls back into that hole is going to fall back directly into the cylinder, which is, uh, which is not something I want to have to deal with later. I really want to keep the area as clean as possible. The injector looks pretty good. There's a lot of carbon built up on the lower part, which is to be expected, I guess. I'll give it a very careful cleaning and inspection before uh, putting the new seal on and putting it back into the tractor. I see that there's some lettering engraved onto the side of the shaft. I'm not really sure if I'll need that uh, information to order a new gasket or not, so I'll spend a few minutes to figure them out right now.
it took uh, just less than a week for the gaskets to come into the local dealer. So that gave me lots of time to soak and clean the injector properly. You can see how fine these little jets are. I actually used a brass brush on that area and I was uh, extra careful. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did order new seals and copper washers for the other three injectors. I just, uh, I just haven't gotten to them yet. They seem to be holding fine. I'll, I'll get to them when I, when I have a bit more time. Once again, I had to bleed the air out of that line before I could uh, tighten it up for the last time. Check out how different the engine sounds once it gets tightened up. Now that it's running well, I'll start to go through some of the other systems and make sure that they're okay. The motor oil looks pretty good, so uh, I'll just wait on changing it until I've heated the engine up a few times and kind of loosened everything that might be settled on the uh, crankcase. There isn't any coolant visible in the rad, so I think it's best to give it a flush and uh, maybe a fresh refill. The old coolant was pretty slow to drain when I first opened it up. But after a little while, it started to pick up some speed, and uh, I guess there must have been a pile of crud maybe built up on the bottom that just had to clear. It's coming out at a pretty good pace now. While all that's going on, I'm going to take a look at the power steering system. The reservoir is bone dry, and it appears that one of the hoses wasn't uh, all the way tightened at the cylinder. The wheel is a real bear to turn without it, so I hope this is a simple fix. Now that the coolant system is completely drained, I flush it further with a few more gallons of clean water. That's the block heater right there, uh, right in front of my hands by the way. I'm going to have to take a look at that and make sure that it, well number one, works, but uh, that those, uh, those wires aren't bare. That could cause some problems. The manual calls for a 50-50 mix of coolant to water, so that's what I, uh, that's what I fill it up with. I'll have to keep an eye on it for leaks over the coming weeks. The system was about half full when I drained it and I'm kind of wondering where the other half went. Also going to have to keep my eye on this power steering system which uh, seems to be working fine right now. My arms are really thankful because I'm telling you that, that thing's a real pain to turn. That's probably the uh, end of the engine work that I need to do at the moment so I'm going to put the body tin back on. I kind of keep changing my mind as to whether I should paint this thing or not. I kind of like the survivor look, but uh, the other part of me kind of likes a nice clean machine, so I'm not sure what I'm going to end up doing. The last thing I want to do today is adjust the parking brake. The tractor still wants to roll when the lever is fully engaged, which is obviously pretty dangerous.
Like everything else, the linkage is really easy to access. Once adjusted, the brakes are fully engaged with about four clicks to spare. The tires are locked solid at that point. So that's it for now. I've chosen an easy task for the tractor's first job. I need to fall a dead ash tree at the end of the driveway and drag it back to the woodshed for winter heating. It will be the first of many, I promise you. Thanks for watching.